So let's talk about blood transfusions. In this unit, we uh, discuss the factors involved in successful tissue transplantation and unsuccessful tissue transplantation. So let's talk about blood transplantation or blood transfusions. So the object here is for a recipient to receive blood from a donor. And what would be good would be for the recipient not to attack that blood, for the immune system of the recipient not to attack the uh, red blood cells that come from the donor. Um, it could happen if the recipient's immune system recognizes the red blood cells as a non-self. So that would be a bad thing if the recipient made antibodies that recognized molecules on the surface of red blood cells uh, as being non-self and therefore attacking them. Are there molecules on the surface of red blood cells? Sure, there are many molecules on the surface of red blood cells. Um, we're going to talk about the blood group antigens in this video. So if there are molecules on the surface of a red blood cell that, is, that are um, identified by an antibody, so the antigen binding site binds them and this would trigger a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction if an individual made antibodies such as IgG type um, binding to the surface of a cell such as a red blood cell that's going to trigger um, what? That'll trigger complement activation via the classical pathway so that involves CD1 eventually leading to complement fixation on the red blood cell and this is going to lead to anaphylatoxin production, C5A and C3A, and inflammation. This could also lead to uh, opsonization of the red blood cells. It could lead to the membrane attack complex forming on the red blood cells. So if an individual has antibodies that recognize molecules on the surface of red blood cells, the red blood cells will be um, destroyed by the recipient's immune system, by their immune response, and you would have a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, uh, which would involve uh, lysis of a destruction of the red blood cells, either the membrane attack complex, destroying the red blood cells, or opsonization by macrophages. So um, how do we avoid uh, rejection of blood uh, during blood transplantation? So this involves uh, knowledge of the blood group antigens. So we're specifically talking now about molecules on the surface of red blood cells. Um, these are specific glycolipids that are found on the surface of red blood cells. So what is a glycolipid? It is a lipid, which you're going to find embedded in the membrane of um, the red blood cell, and some sugars, uh, carbohydrates, found on the surface uh, attached to these lipids. So that's a glycolipid, and cells are covered in glycolipids. Now it turns out that um, some individuals, depending on their genetics, uh, have different glycolipids on their surface. So they physically are different, and that's going to provoke an immune response if an individual uh, receives blood that is different from their own. So let's talk about that. So um, we've heard of the blood type groups, type A, type B, AB, and O. So let's start with type A. An individual who is type A blood, what that means is they've inherited a version of a gene that encodes for an enzyme that adds a different sugar on the surface of this glycolipid. So all of these rare blood cells here, they all have the same glycolipid, but this individual who's type A, their glycolipid is slightly different. So they have an extra um, sugar on top of this glycolipid. Uh, individual who is type B blood, they inherit a version of this gene that encodes for an enzyme that puts a different sugar on the surface of the glycolipid. So you, I've shown here in green. So the glycolipid on all four of these cells, the same except for this little terminal sugar at the end. Some individuals inherit both versions of these genes, and these individuals will have both uh, types of glycolipids on their surface. So these individuals are heterozygous for the genes that encode for the enzymes that modify the glycolipid into either type A or type B. So these individuals would have both types of sugar on their surface, both glycolipids on their surface. Some individuals, they inherit um, uh, versions of the genes that do not modify the glycolipid any more than it normally is. So they have what's called a type O blood, 
So these are the four types of blood we typically talk about, type O, A, B, and AB. Now let's talk about the fact that individuals generate antibodies that bind these glycolipids, specifically the type A and the type B glycolipids. So how does an individual generate antibodies that bind these glycolipids? And we're calling these glycolipids the blood antigens because they provoke uh, an immune response. They are antigens recognized by antibodies. Okay, so it comes down to bacteria. So bacteria also are covered in glycolipids. Now, um, we uh, would recognize bacteria as non-self, assuming their molecules are different than ours. Hopefully our antigen binding sites will bind molecules on the surface of uh, those pathogens. Now the thing about the glycolipids on the surface of bacteria is that there are bacteria that have these sim very similar uh, glycolipids on their surface as well. And virtually all humans on Earth are at some point in their lives, usually very young, infected by these very common strains of bacteria. So they're very um, normal infections that virtually all of us get at a very young age. So bacteria have glycolipids on their surface and these glycolipids look just like the glycolipids on the surface of our cells, which means they look like type A and type B glycolipids. So if an individual is infected by this bacteria, we have the potential to make antibodies against them if they are non-self uh, molecules. So if the uh, type A glycolipid is non-self, we would make anti-A antibodies. If we um, were if identifying the type B glycolipid as non-self, we could also make uh, anti-B antibodies. So we'll see shortly who makes the, each of these antibodies. But all people are exposed to these bacteria. They are um, commensal bacteria, which everybody is exposed to. So we have the potential, we all have the potential to generate anti-A and anti-B antibodies. But not all of us do, and we'll see why now. So a type uh, o person, somebody who is type O, if they are infected by this pathogen, this bacteria, the um, type A sugar, or I should say the type A glycolipid and the type B glycolipids will both look uh, like non-self molecules because the type O person does not have the type A glycolipid or the type B glycolipid, the, the type A antigen or the type B antigen. So they will generate an antibody response when infected by that bacteria. And again, everybody's infected by this bacteria. So a type O person has in their bloodstream type A and type B, I'm sorry, anti-A and anti-B antibodies. Where do these antibodies come from? Again, the commensal bacteria, which everybody's exposed to. A type A person, if they're exposed to this bacteria, and of course they are, they will um, recognize the uh, B antigen and make anti-B antibodies, but the A antigen, that looks just like their A antigen. So A is self, so they're not generating anti-A antibodies because they tolerate the A um, glycolipid. A is self for them, so they're not generating anti-A antibodies, they're generating anti-B antibodies. So presumably in their um, B cell development, when their B cells are being selected for in the bone marrow, they would negatively select for um, antibodies that would bind the type A glycolipid because of that self. But they wouldn't negatively select for anti-B uh, antibodies or immunoglobulins. An individual who is type B, when they're infected by that bacterium, they would recognize the A antigen as non-self and make an antibody to it, so they have an anti-A antibody. The B antigen, well, that's self. It doesn't matter if it's on the sugar, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the bacteria, because it's on the red blood cell, so they um, would negatively select for that uh, anti-B antibody or B cell receptor. So a type B person would make anti-A antibodies, not anti-B antibodies. Now what would type A B, per, uh, somebody who's blood type AB, what would happen to them if they're infected by this bacteria? Well, they would make 
no antibodies against these antigens because both A and B are self in these individuals. So hopefully you understand now at this point why individuals who are type O or A or B or AB, why they would make antibodies that would recognize these blood group antigens. It all comes from the fact that the, there's overlap between our glycolipids and bacterial glycolipids. So now this brings us to blood donation. Let's say all of these individuals, the type O individual, the type A, the type B, the type AB, let's say they all needed blood. Which blood could they get? Well, let's say we donated, um, can we donate all types of blood to these individuals? Well, let's see. Let's start with our type O individual. So that individual gets, uh, can they get all blood types? Well, look at their bloodstream. They carry anti-A antibodies. If that's true, then anti-A antibodies will bind the A antigen, and that would destroy that red blood cell. So they can't receive a type A blood. What about type B blood? Well, they have anti-B antibodies in their bloodstream, so they can't receive that either, or else they'll recognize it and attack it and destroy it. What about type AB? Well, they're going to recognize and destroy that as well. So a type O uh, individual can only inherit type O, can only receive type O blood. Let's move on to our type A person, blood type A. Which blood can they receive? Can they receive type O? Sure, their antibody doesn't recognize type O. Can they receive type A? Sure, because their antibody doesn't recognize type A. Can they receive type B? Well, no, they actually have an antibody that binds type B, and that's found on the surface of both B and AB. So they can't receive either of those blood types, but they can receive O and they can receive A. Let's move on to our type B, indivi type B individual. What kind of blood can they receive? Well, in their bloodstream, they have type A antibody, which would bind and recognize and elicit a type 2 immune response on the type A blood or the type AB blood. So they can receive O or they could receive B. But our last individual here, that individual doesn't have any anti-A or any anti-B antibodies, so they can tolerate all types of blood, O, A, B, and AB. So this is one reason why we use these terms, universal donor and universal acceptor. The type O, in, uh, let's start with actually universal acceptor and type AB. An individual who is type AB can accept all types of blood, O, A, B, or AB. They will not reject it because they lack the anti-A antibodies and the anti-B antibodies. Everybody else, it really matters which blood type they get because they have either anti-A or anti-B antibodies or both. On the other hand, the type O individual, we call that individual the universal donor because if you look at the bottom, everyone can receive type O blood. No one makes antibodies that recognizes type O blood. So type O blood, that is the universal donor type, type AB, that is a universal acceptor.